I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke is retired. Glad to have you aboard as we bring you another true story of the silent service. This is the account of what happened when the USS Crivalli was ordered to the island of Negros in the Philippines to pick up a strange cargo for a submarine. Crivalli cautiously worked her way towards the rendezvous. And made herself ready to handle any emergency. something? Keep your voice down. I thought I saw a flicker in the trees for just a second. It's gone now. Look. Here. Too long. Three short, too long. That's a signal, all right. Yeah. But who's sending it? The refugees or the Japanese? I certainly wouldn't put it past them to use those women and children as decoys. Left, five degrees rudder. Give the recognition signal. Three long, one short, three long. Uh, we'll find out pretty quick if there's a reception committee waiting for us. I'll feel better when we get out of here. We're sitting ducks if they're using those refugees as decoys. We haven't got enough water under us to dive if we wanted to. All right, get them below, on the double. We don't want to stick around any longer than we have. To. Aye, sir. All right, take this fast to the after torpedo room. Bed them down somehow for the time being. This way. This way. Okay, sir. Are you the captain? No, ma'am. I'm the executive officer of the Cavalli. Lieutenant Rue. Lieutenant Rue, I'm Mrs. Stewart. I'm glad to know you. My husband and I were in charge of the mission on Negros. Oh. He'll be along in a moment. Just as soon as all the women and children are safely aboard. <laughs> I hope you'll pardon our appearance, but. Hiding out from the Japanese for two months in the jungle isn't exactly conducive to neatness. Well, now, I think we can manage to overlook that, Mrs. Stewart. <laughs> you go this way. Go ahead. Say, how many are there? Order said to pick up 25 refugees. Well, since the time that my husband sent off that message through the Philippine guerrillas, our flock has grown considerably. We are 43, including my husband and myself. Well, now that's going to make things mighty crowded around here. <laughs> hey, Elmo! Yep. Yeah. You better take charge of this one. Great. Day in the morning. Uh, you speak English, lady? A uh, little bit, mister. Oh. Mm, not very good. Well, don't you worry now. We'll make you comfortable. You come with me. Uh, uh, about, uh, well, how soon? Oh, two weeks. Maybe three weeks. Oh, good, good. We'll have you in Darwin by then. That's in Australia. You come along with me now. I'll make you nice and comfortable. Just take it easy now. That's right. This is my husband, Lieutenant Rue. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Stewart. Will you excuse me, please? I want to report to Captain Walker and everybody's aboard. We'll be shoving off in a few minutes. Come on, John. What's the matter? I was awake all last night, Ruth, praying for guidance. I'm not going with you. Johnny, you can't mean it. It's been on my mind constantly. Since we received the radio message, the submarine was on its way. I've tried to spare you till the last possible moment. Why should you? Haven't you done enough already? You've risked your life dozens of times. 
You know that my duty is here. I can't abandon them now. They need me. But I need you. If what the Japanese radio says is true, if America is losing the war, then I'd never see you again. I know that whatever happens, you'll be as brave as you always have been. When you've had a chance to think it over, I know that you'll agree with me. I have no choice. I have to stay and do what I can. But why should you? The gorillas are fighting men. They, they have weapons. They can carry the battle to the enemy. I have a battle to fight, too. The same one you've been helping me fight all these years. Pardon me. Would you two get below now? We're getting underway. I'm not going. Oh. Would you come with me, Mrs. Stewart? Just a minute. Can I stay too? I've thought it out. At least I'll have the satisfaction knowing you're safe. Try to get a radio message to me from time to time. Sorry, Mr. Stewart, but you'll have to get below. We may have to dive any moment. Tonio, why don't you and your sister help this nice man make up the bunk? Mrs. Lee, I mean, what's the matter? I did not want to leave my man you well behind on Negro. We shall never see him again. Oh, of course you will. None of us wanted to leave our husbands, but now you know just as well as I do that with them fighting we'd just be a burden and a constant worry to them. I'm sorry. I did not mean to add to your trouble. You too had to leave your man. All any of us can do is help these brave men who've come to our rescue just as much as we can. Are you going to be all right? What in the world are you doing? What in the world are you doing? Oh, honey, it's one thing to leave the refrigerator door wide open back at the mission, but it's another thing to fool around with things on the submarine. I just want to... I know, know, honey, but leave things alone. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Sideways, Mr. Elmo. Uh, hey, Ben, uh, bring some lunch to the chief's quarters for Mrs. Talakban. continued her journey with her strange cargo. And then 
when Goldilocks tasted the big bear's porridge, and it was too hot. Then she tasted the middle-sized bear's porridge, and it was too cold. Antonio said you were back, Ron. Are you really? No, not really. Oh, come on now. Do you want to hear the rest of the story or not? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Then she tasted the little bear's bowl of porridge, and it was just right, and she ate it all up. <laughs> You'd never believe that Walt Mazzoni was in a collegiate light heavyweight boxing champ, would you? He certainly has a way with children. Hmm. Well, you've done more than anyone else, Mrs. Stewart. I know we've got you to thank for handling those women. Well, I saw the panic they were in when they came aboard. Well, I, I just did what I could to give them courage, Captain. I, although I didn't believe a single word of what I was telling them. Maybe I was trying to bolster my own faith when I told them all those lies about how sure I was they'd see their husbands again. Someday, when America's won the war. Do you mean to say you doubt that we will? Why shouldn't I? Until you appeared, we hadn't seen an American ship or an American plane or an American soldier, except as a prisoner. For months, the only news we've had has been over the radio from the Japanese, telling us about their glorious victories, and that the Americans are a beaten people. That's really what you think? Look, Mrs. Stewart, we, uh, we listen to the enemy's radio, too, but mostly for laughs. Well, I'm not denying that we didn't take a murderous beating at Pearl Harbor and for months after that. But now we're on the way back. It's a long road and a mighty tough one, but we'll win in the end. Are you sure you're not trying to convince yourself, Captain? Well, you've seen the Cavalli's officers and crew. Do they look to you like beaten men? Here, here, stop that. Get off of that torpedo and stay off, you hear? All right. What's that kid's name? Vicente. Vicente Cariba. Vicente, over here, on the double. Watch me, Captain. You're Vicente Cariba, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, my information is that you're pretty much a leader among the younger group. So I've decided to make your position official. I'm appointing you Assistant Chief Petty Officer. You're in charge of all the kids. You see to it they keep in order. Yes, sir. Very sound psychology, Captain. Well, I've got two of my own back home in Cincinnati. They taught me the hard way. <laughs> Captain, it's Mrs. Talakbond. What'll I do? I better get her to my room and check up on your medical man. Captain, can I help? I did have some experience back in the mission. We'd be very grateful. <laughs> Come on, Elmo. Gosh, why couldn't she wait just four more days? We'll be in Darwin then. Come on, Elmo. <laughs> Yeah? Can you help me put this sign up? I can't reach that guy. Ah, sure. There we are. That's it. Can't you read? No. Well, I'll tell you what it says. Any child who passes this sign will have his ears cut off. by order of Assistant Chief Petty Officer Kariba. How is she? <laughs> False alarm. She's fine. Good. You better leave her in my room. She'll be more comfortable. All right, I'll tell her. You know, Captain, when the Navy made up the medical manual for submarines, I don't think they planned on having women aboard. Passage. Now it's a straight run south to Darwin. It looked that way, sir. Well, this message came from the Albacore. Albacore reports large enemy merchant convoy, heavily escorted, course 240, estimated speed 12 knots. Convoy should pass northern end of Maluka Passage in about one hour if same course and speed are maintained. Albacore unable to get into position for an attack on target. We're the only ship in this area with a chance at the target. Yes, sir. 
and 42 women and children aboard, sir. And then Goldilocks got into the little bed. And it felt so comfortable, she pulled the covers up and fell fast asleep. And by this time, the bears decided to come home for breakfast. <laughs> That's right. And by this time, the bears decided to come home for breakfast. And in they walked, all three of them. The great big bear walked through the door and he walked over the table and he says, in his big deep voice, somebody's been eating my porridge. And then the middle-sized bear and the middle-sized voice walked over the table and says, and somebody's been eating my porridge. And then the little baby bear came in and looked at the table and looked at her bowl and says, and somebody's been eating my porridge and ate it all up. <laughs> Captain Walker? Yes? <laughs> you want to see me? I need your help. Oh? We just received a message from a fellow submarine, the Albacore, that very shortly, less than half an hour, we should sight a very important enemy target. A very large merchant convoy. Well, I don't see what this has to do with me. Well, this hasn't been an easy decision to make, Mrs. Stewart. Under ordinary circumstances, even though I only have two torpedoes left, there wouldn't be any hesitation at striking at such a vital target. But with 42 women and children aboard. Yes, I see. I suppose you have no choice but to attack. None. Your duty must be your only consideration, Captain. You see, Mrs. Sturt, if there was another submarine in a position to take a crack at this convoy, we'd be all right. But there isn't. So that leaves it up to the Cavalli. Well, what do you want me to do? Explain the situation to those women. Tell them we're going into action and why. And uh, try to keep them as calm as possible. Our ship's company will have all they can do without handling a bunch of people in a panic. I'll do everything I can, Captain. Oh, and I think I know a little of what making this decision has cost you. Thank you. Radar's picked up another escort on the near flank. Range, 6 0 0 I'm gonna dive now. Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive! <laughs> our job, ma'am. The one we're trained for. All submariners are volunteers, you know. Chief? Yeah? What's the action station for Assistant Chief Petty Officer? Stand by to act as messenger if needed.
I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Elmo! Mrs. Stewart! Miss Tollock, I need you in the captain's room. Right away. Hurry. Thank you, Miss Eddie. Now get this, everybody. No yelling and no screaming. That's orders. We're hiding from the enemy. All's clear on the sound gear. Looks like we've lost them, Captain. Yeah, I want to wait a while longer. Make sure. Meet our new passenger. Just signed on. A born submariner. Hey, and you know what his name is? Here, what? Elmo Walker Cravalli Talakvon. Well, <laughs> congratulations, Pop. Hey, he looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> Cavalli arrived at Darwin, Australia, carrying a happy bunch of people. Hey, wait a minute. Good to have had you aboard, Chief, and thanks for all your help. When I grow up, I'm going to enlist in the Navy, Chief. Thanks for the hat. Now, don't forget, you dust him off every day with talcum powder. Oh, I take good care of my son. Don't worry, Mr. Elmer. You very fine doctor. Bring me fine boy. Well, we made it. We certainly owe you many thanks. Oh no, you're wrong, Captain. It's I who am indebted to you. Ever since we saw the Americans in action like the men of the Crow Valley, our doubts and fears have vanished. We're more convinced than ever that what you said is true. It may be a long road ahead, but victory lies at the end of it. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Commander Walter Mazzoni, who was torpedo and gunnery officer of the Cravalli on the mission you have just witnessed. That certainly must have been quite a cruise, Walt. It really was. I don't think anybody who was aboard the Crevalli will ever forget our floating nursery. I guess you found out there were some subjects that weren't taught at the submarine school. Well, our instructors always told us that we should be ready for any emergency. Anyway, all of us aboard the Crevalli were so very happy we were able to rescue the so many wives and children to, who might otherwise have fallen into enemy hands. I can only concur in the message you received from the boss. Well done, Crevalli. Thank you. We hope you will be aboard again when we bring you another true adventure of the silent service. Take your love and up the line Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean's wide From down, down underneath the sea Take the force for past the world In the future yet to be, that 